and in my 40 years i do not recall any instance where the political leadership failed to back the armed forces uh, so that you know the army is doing something and uh, we are not going to back you up and that you are on your own i, I don't recall any instance uh, for example i think one of our strongest responses to chinese action was in 1986 uh, which was the wandong incident uh, and that time the army responded very forcefully uh the political leadership back the decision i i know initially there were some uh, questions about uh, will this lead to some kind of conflict with china uh, but thereafter whatever the army did was complete backing uh, by the political leadership and in fact uh, the wangdong incident uh, carried on almost for one year similar to what uh, we are seeing in the dark i think the crucial question we should ask is whether there are clear political directions to the military from the leadership and uh, because i see ultimately all all war all wars all military operations have a political objective so ultimately the political aim is what decides uh, how the military is going to operate uh, and here i think you could say that the current leadership uh, that we have political leadership i think is fairly uh, unambiguous and has greater clarity in its political aims regarding what our national security objectives should be so uh, they they have been they have been quite clear they have been uh, you know very articulate in how they look at national security i think they also have a greater risk taking appetite than we have seen uh, you know in the past and so if there are clear directions to the military i think the military knows exactly what it's to do how it is to operate so uh, as i said uh, it's not as if uh, the army has not been or the military has not been backed by the political leadership in the past uh, what we are seeing now is is greater clarity on national security objective